Storytelling Podcast, episode number 27. Welcome to the Storytelling Podcast, where everything's fictional, even you. And now, here are your hosts, two guys and a girl who hate Game of Thrones, Garrett, Zach, and Crystal. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Storytelling Podcast, the podcast that's all about fiction, fiction, and more fiction, and telling the best truths through the medium of lies. I'm your host, Garrett Robinson. With me, as always, your faithful co-host, ZC Bolger. Also with us, some not not as always, but as pretty often, David W. Wright. Well, often uh, we, enough to change the intro, huh? Yeah, that's right. Seriously. We should really what change that fuck? shit. No, we are getting we are getting a third host. It is going to be a woman. You know, we've got. Okay, I just want to say we've gotten a little bit of flack for that, where it's like you should just find a third person who who you know, regardless of who they are and and what they work. And you guys, and and you guys, uh, you guys talked about a similar thing, David, on on uh, the self publishing podcast. Oh this yes, week. we did. Yeah, but but that was that was a different thing. That was like, why do you have three guys? It's like, fuck you. First of all, number one reason, our fucking show. Fuck yourself. Fuck the horse you rode in on, and fuck anybody that looks like you or the horse. <laughs> Third reason, wow. you wanna. <laughs> <laughs> Second thing is like it just it, it just works for you guys, and that's like you're not like trying to like that 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 just that is that is what it is. There you it's go. Because you we guys, knew one another. Exactly, and so. you do what you do, and it works perfectly. And it's like like you said, like if CJ Lyons could take the time to be on your show, you'd absolutely have her as a regular host. Yeah, don't hold our penises against us. Exactly, <laughs> hold your penises against yourself. Bow, chicka, bow, bow, but chicka, bow. It's gonna be wow. that kind of show. That's been like less than two <laughs> minutes, and we've already got the dick joke. Um, we don't want to disappoint the viewers. Yes, well, Chrissy's a very happy person. We've been getting um, a lot so, of we've got oh, been hey. getting a lot of submissions as well for uh, our we third have host. auditions. We've, we've going, uh, not really auditions. If somebody sent us an audition tape and was just like, <laughs> that'd be dope. I would like to be. I would like to be on the storytelling <laughs> podcast. I just feel like <laughs> you're here in. are my boobs. You're <laughs> in. <laughs> It'll be a guy. We're kidding. We're obviously <laughs> totally kidding. Don't send Dave, us pictures Dave's of your boobs. Gonna make us make us a video. Send later. pictures of boobs to at ZC Bulger at Twitter. Agreed. The first time they actually got that right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, you know, we got Carl's a lot. Just gonna fill my Twitter feed up with boobs now. <laughs> we got a we got a lot of live uh, live watchers that would be already. Awesome. Chrissy Moss uh, says, hi there. Remarkable Reed says, writing horror or your average trip to Target. It's the same thing, really. <laughs> uh, Chrissy Moss made a horse comment. Eric Goodman said, you guys need to change the audio intro. Like I said, we are... Oh, yeah, so I wanted to explain the reason. I wanted to give like a little bit of justification, which is that... Um, is that I have a lot of like very, very feminist friends, and I'm in uh, Hollywood which is a very, very male-dominated industry, which is not very complimentary to women, which has a lot of bias, and and da-da-da-da-da. That is like a social mission of mine to enact change upon that, and therefore I want a woman, somebody who can talk reasonably intelligently about these issues and everything. What are you saying? Most women aren't intelligent? <laughs> no. I like I'm... how I turned that around. <laughs> Nice, very nice. You could be a lawyer, Dave. You could be I a lawyer. Could. You could be a very good lawyer. Um, oh, and Remarkable Reed spotted that we had matching sh shirts. That's right. We've got our Who's Your Daddy Darth Vader t-shirts. Show the love. Good it's lord. Not the same, it's not now, the exact same the thing is, wow. together. Garrett, the wow. thing is, is that, that though, even though we want a woman to be the third host, that honestly doesn't justify not changing the fucking intro by now. Because Dude, we could have had it changed. It, it's, they could have been Garrett Robinson, ZC Bulger, and whoever the fuck is sitting in the third chair. <laughs> That's true, but it's like right? it's a process. It's it's. I have to write sixty thousand words by Sunday, dude. Come on, uh, by Saturday actually, if we want to get it. That could Sunday. record it. It's not that hard could, to I'll record. Yeah, that's true. That's true. I'll do a sweet, awesome voice. Like this. Ooh, Cindy S. Jameson is chiming, and I've never seen her live commenting before. She said, "Z, don't look so smug. I'll hurt you, and you'll like it." Wow. Oh. <laughs> I think I'm gonna like Cindy a lot. <laughs> And then she said, what about just oh, cleavage? Will that suffice? <laughs> okay, Cindy. All right, hold on. You're a cool <laughs> listener. I like you. No, nope, Dave, don't do it. Stop doing it. <laughs> David, not I, your cleavage. I just turned off David's camera. Um, so, anyway. Um, you know what? Cleavage? Send those over, and I'll let you know if there needs to be more. 
Okay, we. <laughs> we got to. Uh, female family members are going to start sending pictures. <laughs> and anyway, we've got we we honestly Zach and I are having to like reduce our list of criteria because there's like a lot of criteria for the third post. I want somebody who I know personally and who is in Los Angeles. Like, uh, that was that was a convenient thing with Crystal. She's here in LA. When we we could like meet up if we wanted to. We could like talk about Garrett, stuff. We could have coffee. Garrett never met her though, which I thought is hilarious. I'm just saying it was nice. It was convenient. <laughs> I've never met Johnny. Well, yeah. Really? Uh, really? It's different. Sean, but only twice on Sean. It's different. In both only times twice on Sean. <laughs> on his face. Yeah, for me, the uh, it, they just need to be hot and be published. Oh, jeez. They don't even need <laughs> That's to That's very know feminist. <laughs> wow. Wow, Zach. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Feminism. <laughs> so, um... Let's uh, let's let's start drifting towards the topic. Let's not get on topic, but let's start drifting towards it. Um, I want to uh, issue a final little call to action. Tonight is the last night that you can pre-order Mid Realm uh, of uh, from the, the first book of the Realm Keeper series. Pre-orders close at midnight tonight, Pacific Standard Time. So if you're watching this live and you haven't gotten Mid Realm yet and you were waiting to do it, you should really do it now because. You get uh, the autograph paperback. You get all of the ebooks for free, and you get uh, a special exclusive short story uh, that's a prequel to the book. Which nobody but the like, it's not for sale. You can't buy it afterwards. You can't get it later. It's only for people who pre-ordered the book. Um, so anyway, just gonna put that out there. If you haven't got it yet, feel free to do so now. And does that come I... with or without naked photos of Zach? If you're going to pre-order it, we'll absolutely send you naked photos of Zach. Um, I also want to hear from people who read Episode 5. I mean, Episode 6 just came out, but I want to hear from people who read Episode 5, because that's my favorite. I thought it was a really dope episode. So. Way to shit on Episode 6. <laughs> no, Episode 6 is good. It's a, it's a really good episode. But they but all so die in 6, so it kind exactly. of... Exactly. You know, end of the series. <laughs> The finale is just them, their burial ceremonies. It's one by one them dying as uh, Breathe Me plays. <laughs> it's just the word blackness over wow, and over that's an again. Odd, that's out. an odd song choice, Dave. I, I mean, it's a it's, good song choice. It's, but it's the ending movie. of Six Feet Under. Oh, is it really? Yes. I, it's a rather iconic ending. The fact that you don't know that makes me doubt your Hollywoodness. Is that the one where you get this? They, it's like, it goes forward in time. You get to see everybody how they died. Yes. I've only seen the ending of it. It was a beautiful ending. I love. It was a show. great ending. Best yeah, ending not, ever of any show ever. Don't know what you guys are talking about. No. Wow. No, no, nothing. I'm <laughs> done. Um, anyway, and and I wanted to uh, w one other thing that I wanted to uh, mention this week is um, because next week is the finale. And I've communicated about the finale before. I think that we've explained the finale before. But one thing that a lot of people don't seem to... Uh, I, I've had a few people say that they didn't know this or they didn't understand it, is that the finale is a special episode that comes after the regular episodes. It's three times as long as a regular episode, and it changes chapter-to-chapter -chapter viewpoint of the characters, as opposed to the episodes, which are each episode is told from one person's POV. This one changes the POV. And um, and also because it's three times as long, it's going to come out at two ninety nine instead of ninety nine cents. So a couple of people that I've told that to are like, "What? This is the first I've ever heard of it." And I'm like, "We've we've definitely mentioned it before." We definitely but have. Yeah. You anyway. bastards. But I know, it, right? It, it, it's also it wraps up the story for the book Mid Realm. So it's not just some extra whatever the fuck. It it does wrap up the story. It's well, it's the end of the book. End. It's like <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If it were a TV show, it would be the two the hours finale. season finale. <laughs> exactly. That's what it would be. That's yeah. which is it is. So anyway, there you go. A very special so, Punky Brewster. <laughs> yes. Six so, uh, thousand word season. Dave, finale. how is uh, drifting even closer to our actual topic for the night? Uh, how are uh, how is Z twenty one thirty five going? All right, I guess I don't check numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Neither do I. <laughs> I guess it's going fine. I don't really give a shit. Well, I, don't know. I I stopped I stopped counting and worrying and stuff. I figure okay, people are gonna buy it. They're gonna buy it. You know, I check the reviews, see if anybody has questions. But uh, 
it, it's going well the last time I looked. So and we're hearing, you know, good reaction and email and stuff. So cool, good. But I, I'm waiting. Awesome. We 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 do some super awesome shit in the next couple of episodes, which is like legendary. So that's dope. Well, you've only got you're you're only what three weeks in now. Yeah, three. Uh, yeah, six weeks total. The third one just came out. Uh, Today, I today, think. today's I Tuesday. Today's Tuesday, yeah. Yes, today it came out. <laughs> yeah, so you're three See, weeks I'm, in. I'm already... right on top of that. You're right on it, man. You're just... <laughs> now, it's three weeks in, and it's got seven customer reviews already, which is better than Roundkeepers had three weeks in, and six of them are five stars, so that's pretty fucking good. Is the other one, like, one star? <laughs> no, it's four. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you're like... You're... How dare they just four stars? I know, right? What asshole would write four stars, especially on something like Yesterday's Gone Season 4? <laughs> Not me. I'm a dick. <laughs> um, anyway. <clears throat> so, um, da -da 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 -da. Zach, you had something you wanted to mention. Uh, yeah, St Stacy Claflin. You guys might have watched her when she was on the podcast earlier. Uh, she did a review of Danny Calloway and a... Uh, interview with me for her blog and if you guys go to my uh, Twitter which you know that handle by now uh, <laughs> you can you can find a link there if you want to check it out it's pretty sweet I just want to give her a shout out because she's is awesome. there a Kickstarter involved in this hopefully damn it Dave uh, you're so only done with one goddamn Kickstarter <laughs> I got like 92 tweets and emails about it so it just feels like it was a lot of them Oh, I know. I just felt like bugging the fuck out of you. <laughs> well, we've got a lot of people jumping in here. Mary Ela said, you don't want to see my boobs. At my age, they're pointing south. Bring you know, it let on. Us be, let us be the judge. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> oh, we're bad people. You yeah, are a Chrissy bad Chrissy said, person. Zach isn't in L.A. <laughs> isn't in L.A. usually. Da, 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 da. Cindy said, I was published in third grade, and I think I'm hot. Okay. The, the, right. the, the key to that is she's now in fourth grade. <laughs> <laughs> and then Cindy said, "Say with." I don't understand that. With, with, Didn't, huh? doesn't work. I, I, don't, I don't get know. it. What's it? What's it supposed to do? What? What? What's what was supposed to happen? Oh, See, and Chrissy we, Moss said, "There, dudes, I tweeted you cleavage." All right, I gotta go. I'm gonna... <laughs> <laughs> That's the wrong Hold on. Tape. <laughs> I have to uh, check my uh, my Twitter. Damn. Here. <laughs> Chrissy, I don't think that's you. <laughs> oh, that's Oh, amazing. Chrissy, if that is you, you're on. You are <laughs> in. What a sexist pig. He is he is actually kind of a sexist pig a little bit. It, it happens. Wow. <clears throat> we have we have interesting conversations <laughs> sometimes. I have interesting conversations with all my friends and and like I think everybody's got like got like their flaw. Like I have my one friend who's like He's a little bit racist. He's just he's, he's a little, <laughs> a little bit. bit? <laughs> if I, it's who I think you're talking about, he's a lot racist. Are you talking? Does the guy you're thinking of start with D or A? Yes, D. D. He's he's pretty. He's not a lot racist. I I like a lot racist is like deep south to me. Really <laughs> racist okay. is neo Nazi. Fine. He's pretty racist. He's okay, fine. He's like, that's true. That's true. He's pretty he's racist. Good-naturedly racist. <laughs> uh, so he's that's all right? No, no, I'm not saying it's all right. Saying and you I'm have friends that are racist. Him. I have I is, have a couple of friends that are like they're they're a little fucking bit out of my life. Out the, of my life. Homophobic or racist? Though, you're out of my fucking life. The difference though with me is that mine are jokes, and they actually feel that way. <laughs> so right. anyway, yeah. it's not. They, so and, you say a lot of racist jokes, then, do you? Paula Dean? I'm not talking about racist jokes because he said I was sexist. No, no, no. Okay, here. here oh, he's Dave. deflecting. I'm not just Dave. sexist. I'm also racist. Dave, Dave, here's you an example. You are not understanding Tell me at all. Oh, Dave. I think I am quite well, sir. Oh, Dave, <laughs> Dave. Yes. Tell me if this if this comes across as racist to you, but if you then would also immediately excise this person from your life. Dude, I would never have sex with a black chick. Never. Never. That's a, that's a little bit racist, right? A little bit. Uh, if he's just like, it, it, I've he, never if seen he, an attractive if black woman. If he emphasized never a lot, then yeah. But it could just be a matter of taste. Like, you know, I'm 
Which is what he I'm was trying to explain. I'm not particularly attracted to redheads. What? Uh, so, How are you not attracted to redheads? I, but just, just like saying you, a you, you, ha, you have a certain type, so you might not be just into Spanish girls or black I girls can't, or Chinese girls. Right, but I'm, I'm but just But if saying, he's saying like, never, ever, ew, ew, gross, yeah, that's a problem. <laughs> no, 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 but just like as a blanket, as a blanket statement, I cannot imagine ever seeing a redhead who I would ever want to have sex with. That's a little bit like, what have you got against I, I, red? Uh, it's like, not that. I, 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 exactly, see? That's the thing. It's just like... I don't particularly favor redheads. If somebody had said like, and and this, you know, like this is not what he said, but if he said like, I've never seen a black woman that I was attracted to, that's completely different from I would never have sex with a black chick. And it's yeah, just like that, that is different. But you it, wouldn't it, like you would you don't kick him out of your life for saying that. I'm, it depends what I probably have, I'd ask him other questions to find out the levels of his racism. What if it was Sean? Well, I know Sean's not racist. If he was, he he sex with lots of black chicks <laughs> <laughs> and redheads. Let's move on, um, <laughs> because redheads are race. Boy, I feel like this show has gotten. Now, Dave, actually, you, actually, you do bad things to our show. Yes, I do. A actually, I I do find redheads attractive. When I was a kid, though, I was scared by them. Really? Uh, yeah. Well, they don't uh, have souls. I had, I had a weird. <laughs> But but yeah, there, there's a, a few redheads that I that I think are pretty now. So it's not like that. That's changed. But that that is. But I can understand why somebody might not like blondes or brunettes or redheads or or black girls. So right. But but to yeah. say what he said, that that does seem racist. So a little bit. And there's other things as well which we won't go into because you <laughs> say won't his want name to his occupation. <laughs> no, definitely well, not. I will never, out him ever. publicly and shame him. <laughs> I will never ever have sex with a white chick, so I'm just saying that right up front. <laughs> That's because he's uh, about to get married to a Latino chick. That's the joke there. You know, it's like he's only going to have sex with her for the rest of his life. It's a joke. <laughs> he's not Let's fucking racist. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> the comments died utterly. I, I have a feeling everybody's <laughs> watching the show just going, what? I can't happening? believe that they're talking bad about this. For watching this. <laughs> Or maybe I'm getting, I'm getting to the storytelling <laughs> podcast, everybody. I, I'm getting shit for saying that about redheads. I'm not saying redheads are ugly. I'm saying I was scared by them as children. <laughs> oh, boy. I was also scared by little people as children. I was in a, a shoe store, and I saw a... You would not have been a big day, Game of Thrones fan when you were a kid. When I saw I saw what I thought was a little kid with a beard, and I started crying to my dad. I said, that kid has a beard, and my dad's like so embarrassed. Uh, yeah. I was time, a very sheltered child. One time, a very very good friend of mine was was in a a, a waiting room with. Why does Carl think I'm ignoring him? Carl, I'm not ignoring you. I don't know what you're saying. Anyway, um, so uh, he's not. Cindy, for, oh yeah, he is. Cindy's he said, offended. I already watched most days. <laughs> Cindy's offended. Yes. Uh, she's, she has dark red hair. Specifically, I was not attracted to girls with, like, super bright red hair. Like gingers? Yes, that would be the word. That would be the so, word. Okay, cool. But but but, but even then, there, there's some that I think are pretty now. So. Wow, that, that's Carl, changed. Sinclair, Carl Sinclair made a joke about you and his wife. That that is an ongoing thing. His wife said, I have a either... Oh, that's right. Nice pretty or eyes. sexy, That's right. pretty eyes, and then I think he said sexy smile. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Which might be the only time anyone's ever said that in the history of ever. He's uh, He said, Dave, my wife is a redhead, and you've been up to shenanigans with her for weeks now. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> nice. Carl, let me say congratulations on that. She is yes, the one well that changed me on redheads, by the way. It was I, made my, I made my wife dye her hair red just so she would conform to my wishes. That's not true. Um, so let's get on topic, shall this we? This episode is about redheads and racists. This, is, this episode, I don't know what this episode's about anymore, but we're about to talk about something that's very near and dear to Dave's heart. We're going to see if he can actually stay on topic with it. Uh, this week's topic is writing horror. We've been doing uh, writing in various genres. Um, we haven't been doing it on any sort of a regular schedule, but we talked about writing fantasy, writing science fiction, and I was, I was kind of holding off on horror because... Um, and this is going to be interesting on the show. I don't like horror. I, I heard streaming. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to. Yeah, those are my kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I have a basement too, Dave. I don't. Um. I don't ever want to. Write Why is horror. Zach in a room with your children? What's going yeah. on? 
That's actually my bedroom. You want to see something funny? Hi, everybody. Oh, oh. Hi. Did that? you guys get married <laughs> and not tell me? No, Zach's actually staying in my house while he's in Los Angeles, so that's why it's uh, that's why it's happening. Oh, wow, okay. Cindy really likes you, Dave. She said, I forgive you, Dave. We're still in love. <clears throat> I mean, stay classy. <laughs> nice. My, so, my, um, my comments are a bit behind, but okay. Yeah, Thanks. mine too. I'm watching the live YouTube. So, um, uh, so horror. Yeah. So I don't, I don't particularly read horror. What I are read you calling a horror? stuff because uh, dark horror. You're a number one whore. Um, <laughs> so uh, I read your guys' stuff because it's like I, because I like it. It's not that I don't it's like. It's not any real horror. horror. <laughs> yeah. I, I, no, it's real horror. I mean, it's horror. It's definitely. I feel horrible after I've read it. So <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> We're the antidote to the Bible. You love. I think uh, I'm not going to go there. No, not I'm the Bible. Not going to go there. Books. Okay, there we go. No, because um, the Bible doesn't make you feel good. The Bible makes you feel awful too. Oh God, Dave, please, please, can well, you not offend uh, anybody? On, on how did we get on the? <laughs> please. How did we get on to the Bible? <laughs> let's just let's not retrace the track because we'll head somewhere else that I don't want to go. I'm going to teach you guys not to invite me onto your show. <laughs> Dave, so Dave, Dave writes horror. Dave obviously likes horror. He likes a lot of horror. I know that you know you like uh, what's his face, Clive. Uh, Clive Barker. He's Barker. More fantasy, That's what it was. But yeah. I wanted to say Clive Hustler. Who the fuck is Clive Hustler? There's Clive Cussler. Maybe that's what I'm thinking. Like, anyway, it doesn't fucking matter because it's Clive Baker. <laughs> Clive uh, Hustler sounds like a porn guy. <laughs> It is. That's a really good like porn Zach name. Bulger. Like Bulger. Bulger, yeah. <laughs> That's right. Um, so, uh, so Zach, um, and Zach, you want to? You have you have horror aspirations? Yeah, I have. I have a whole bunch of stories that I want to write, but I don't know. I just like, for me, it's like almost like erotica. Like I start to write, and I'm like, I can't do this. <laughs> Why you're getting an erection? That's definitely not my reaction <laughs> yep. when I start writing yep. erotica. <laughs> I start getting an erection when I see that blood and people screaming. <laughs> you know, no, no, no. It's it has to do with like I guess it's probably just because I've been on I've done so many young adult things that I, I there there there's a certain line when you're writing young young adult and you have to go way past that to do what you're doing. <laughs> you know. You mean that line Garrett always suggests in his edits? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have I have the worst edit suggestions for young adults. I should I should I could make a fucking horror book out of his suggestions, actually. You could. Actually. That would be amazing. Yeah. We had a we had a very interesting conversation with Zach already tweet already tweeted. We're writing our young adult book, Realm of Keepers, and we're writing and he's he's like right next to me, um, you know, like <laughs> uh, on the other side of the room, and I look up suddenly and I'm like, Zach, we can't say douchebag, right? And he's like, No. I'm like, All right, good. I'll use something really? else. Really? Yeah, I don't. You think can. You uh, can. You can, but we're you not can, going you can, to. You can curse in young adult. Like I bought a book that was like young adult. There was they they said fuck, and I was like, it's whatever. It's whatever you say it is. Yeah. But like Zach is my Zach is my filter, I guess. <laughs> if we <laughs> anyway, want to be horror, in douchebag's not going to be in there. Yeah, in horror, um, you have much less. Was it douchebag and like Mark Twain? <laughs> I don't think so. No. Oh. Um, but uh, but yeah. So horror, you can you can do pretty much as much as you want to, as willing as you're dark to go. Like, and there's a whole separate thing titled dark horror, and it's like, isn't that just an horror? oxymoron? No. Right. Not exactly. Oxymoron. Not uh, redundant. Redundant. redundant yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like saying it's like saying explicit pornography. It's like, well, how is it? What? How did you? <laughs> well, there are there are variations. Tell us about the different variations of porn. Tell maybe. us about the different types of porn. No, <laughs> god damn it. Maybe when no, we have Lexi Maxwell on this no, show. I, we'll I was thinking horror. horror though. I mean there there's horror where there's, you know, dark horror might be you know, like saw sort of stuff, just really disgusting and bloody and I I don't know if that is. I don't even know the definition of dark horror. Or it might be like Sad, depressing endings where everybody dies. That might be dark. I don't know. That's definitely dark horror. But is like I thought that was. I just thought that was most horror. So Hamlet is going to be dark horror, basically. No, I mean because it's not horror. Yeah, that was a little joke. Oh, okay, good. Out. Gotcha. No, it didn't work at all. 
Um, so, yeah, I don't know. Like, uh, I, I know that there's various variations of horror. There's sci-fi horrors, da, 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 but like horror, I guess, if you had to define it, would be something intended to frighten and also, like, but it's more than just frighten because thrillers scare people. You know what I mean? But, like, I don't know, Dave. You're the expert. How do you define horror? I think anything where you're writing fears come true, at least in the books. That That is, you know, there, there, there is... It, a thriller has more action. A thriller, you know, a thriller can be scary, but I think the distinction between a thriller and a horror is that the horror is... More, more fear, more, more bad shits happening. Um, not as much action. More psychological, I think, than anything. Although not necessarily all the time. Uh, like the Saw movies are not really psychological. I, I, I don't like the whole torture porn sort of, you know, right. movies. I don't know if that's as prevalent in books because I really don't read that many horror books. Because uh, there's a lot of bad horror, bad horror movies and books and I try to stay away because it just just leaves me numb. Right, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> and there's stuff like slasher horror which like Yeah, I don't like that. Good slasher horror books but there's very few good slasher horror movies that I can think of. I think that's a really good description that, that thriller is more action because that, I don't know, that makes a lot more sense to me. I didn't... But Yesterday's Gone is put it like that. action-packed. It is, but... Um, it's got but not monsters when... and... Yeah, but I feel like when the monster at least what I had read was like when the monsters come out, it I mean I guess I guess in season one they're like running through the um all those cars. That was pretty damn yeah. epic. <laughs> um but yeah, I, I I guess there's a line there, but I when I think of thriller I definitely think more action and horror is more like um like your heart's racing in thriller because it's suspenseful, whereas your heart's racing in horror because you don't want something to happen that's about to happen or something like right, that. Right, like somebody's gonna die. I, I think it's, it's I really think it's scary. A difference in degree. Yeah, I think it's yeah. a difference in degree where it's like it's the difference between fear and anxiety. Thrillers, you're anxious. It's like, oh, something bad could happen. Horror, you're like, somebody's gonna fucking get eaten by a thing, you know, some kind of fucking thing. In, in horror done well also has like a creeping sort of dread, like you know, it's just, you know it's going to happen, and you're just like, as you turn the pages, you don't want it to happen, and you're coming closer and closer, you're like, no, 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 don't let that happen. You don't get the same thing in thrillers, I don't think. Right, right, right. Yeah, there's a, um, there's a horror, well, there's a podcast called The Role Playing Public Radio that you can get on iTunes, and they it's basically like like Dungeons and Dragons games that they people are just playing and you're listening. But they did one called Bryson Bryson Hills, which is I was listening to it. It's about five hours long, and it's 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 a horror based, and it's like 1935. And like I was doing walks while I was listening to it, and I was looking around, like making sure something wasn't about to fucking you know attack me, you know. So it, it's funny because horror. I don't know. I, I haven't had too much experience in the subject because I don't watch horror movies. I don't read horror books, you know. But when I do come across something, it's usually either I don't finish it <laughs> or, or I do finish it because it's really good. And that's what like I found yesterday's gone. Like sex, exactly. If it's really, really bad, I'm just like, oh, fuck it. I'll just, I'll just fake. Not it. finishing this. <laughs> I'll just fake Go it. Go take wow. care of yourself. <laughs> Um, yeah, uh, I like, it's funny, I like my horror with comedy, with a lot of comedy, like Zombieland, which is, like, barely horror, and my least favorite parts of that are the parts that would be considered horror, like, I don't like seeing people getting eaten, or stabbed, or tortured, or anything, so in Zombieland, I'm like, this shit's fucking funny, and, like, shooting a zombie in the face... That's okay, but when like you see like the people getting like ripped apart and tackled and eaten, I'm just like, oh, that doesn't make me happy at all. Um, and it provides a nice counterpoint to the things in the movie that do make me laugh and make me, you know, like whatever. But um, I don't but, like campy horror. I, I like yeah, Shaun I mean, of the Dead. 
I like Zombie Land. That can't be horror. Uh, th- those are like the only instances. Though usually I do not like it. I like realistic. Uh, you know, I so think you okay, like, like you don't like uh, uh, Chainsaw Arm. Um, Evil Dead. Army. No, Evil Dead. Is it Evil Dead or is that Army of Darkness? It's both. It, it, it's, it's all it's right. A sequel it, to it, 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 it's right. not my. It's not that. my favorite. No. Um, okay. No, I like I like real I like Twenty Eight Days Later. Um, that and the other Twenty Eight Weeks Later. I love those. Those are awesome. Uh, I I think the other thing about horror that we're we're missing is it's cathartic. You're facing your fears through somebody else, and hopefully they're living through it, uh, or they're not, and then you're just <laughs> and then you're just depressed. <laughs> not David Wright story. Uh, <laughs> but that there is a. Uh, a cathartic thing with horror that I don't think you get in other stuff, uh, other, other genres. It's yeah, and I know what you mean. It doesn't have that effect on me. Um, like after I saw uh, uh, World War Z, which is like much more thriller, like action thriller than don't, an actual don't spoil horror that. film. Okay, mm-hmm. all I'll say is I was so terrified that it ruined the rest of my night. I wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't like, whoo, well that's over with, and I had this thrilling experience, and what I was just like. Holy shit! I was walking around all night just. It How can you be day. terrified though? It's zombies. That's not real. It's never gonna happen. Ever, ever, ever. It's a well-made film. Like it's a really well-made film. It put you there. It made me feel like I was there, or like like it made me feel like something bad was gonna happen. I know all film is fake. All film is fake. Yeah, but you know? some are more believable. Like there was that one. Like I Gandhi. Forget. Yes, that was a horror horror movie. Uh, the one with uh, I think Liv Tyler, uh, where she and her husband were Strangers. in the house. Yeah, and the people broke in and like tormented wow. them. That was a dark ass movie because that could really happen. That's that believable. could really happen, but it wasn't. Like, and it's the same thing. Yeah, I it's think like, that was based on a real story, though. Yeah. Right. And if I'd watched that ha- happening to actual real people, you know, that probably would have been even worse. But like, <laughs> probably. <laughs> the point is, is like I can. Spend, I can I can Maybe. suspend my disbelief and and still be affected by something. You know what I mean? Yeah. For for me, um, the horror has to have a, a good storyline because, like, I, which I just realized, like, the podcast that I just mentioned as well as Yesterday's Gone, at least the first season, which I haven't read any more of that. But You loved um, so much of it, you ignored the rest of the seasons. <laughs> um, but then also The Walking Dead. The storyline is so great. And it's funny because I think back to Yesterday's Gone and it's very uh, individual based just like The Walking Dead is. I want to hear the characters. people's stories. Yeah, yeah characters. Yeah, and, and uh, that's what it is for me. If it's just something like, oh, everybody's just fucking dying or getting killed or whatever the fuck, then it's not for me. <laughs> like Saw, that's not character based to me. Yeah, that that is where bad horror movies fall down, and that is what makes a good horror movie good. Like The Descent was about these women that uh, go in a cave. Uh, they're they're caving, they're exploring, they're off on a, a weekend trip, and they're friends. And the whole like first half of the movie is like their friendship, and they're talking, and you could see the tension between them. There's something that's happened, you don't know what it is, and that really drives the movie that would have otherwise been just another fucking movie where people are attacked by monsters. But because you care about the characters and you want to know what happened to them, uh, the movie's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I want to go back and talk about the cathartic thing that you uh, that you mentioned really quick. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and, and bring up a, 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 a weird little parallel situation. Um, I have a, a friend that's in a band, and he uh, tours relatively regularly, and he has... Um, He's he's played with uh you know like relatively big bands across the country and whatever. He has described the difference in experience when he worked with like emo bands or whatever who are very like you know I brush your skin with my teeth and I want you so badly it's so like girly and like sweet and like whatever right and it's like that kind of music <laughs> and these wow. people that's gonna be my are, ringtone right, <laughs> just like steal that audio off of the um. And he, he you just made uh, all the ladies' panties wet. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Cindy wants my body right now. Um, they, so, and he's like, and they're very weird people. They're very like, eh, like, not comfortable in a conversation, and very neurotic, and da da da. And then he's like, and then we went on a tour, uh, which was like a death metal tour, and there was Slipknot, and there was you know, 
I don't know a lot of the bands, but like Mastodon, I don't know, a bunch yeah. of bands like that, like crazy. And he was just like, they're just the coolest dudes. It's like they get on there and it's just like, it's like, and they go out there and they do that. They get it all out. <laughs> exactly. And then they come off and they're backstage and they're just hanging out. They're like, hey, dude, that was a cool show. You like that? Yeah, all right. Yeah, cool, man. You know, like, I mean, they're not like that California <laughs> surfer, dude. Yeah, they're Fuck fucking you. surfers. <laughs> all right, bro, um, totally. Hang time, man. Yeah, dude, totally. It's like, yeah, I'm a goat, man. <laughs> Um, but uh, anyway, um, by the way, for anybody who is watching this live, we're still new to the whole live fire thing, and I completely forgot to put it up tonight, but um, I just uh, tweeted the link to the live show with a uh, live fire uh, comment feed, so if you do want to go there and comment on live fire, Chrissy is all alone, and she just Chrissy, had to go, baby. so that's awesome. Well, <laughs> you know, you sang, and she just had to go take care of herself. <laughs> yeah! <there you> <laughs> Oh boy, uh, Chrissy, please tell me if that's the case because that's awesome. <laughs> no, um, so yeah, so I just if I take it. care of. I meant shoot herself. <laughs> yeah, yes. in the face. <laughs> um, uh, we got a whole shit ton of comments tonight. Let me see. I want to go as far down as we can. Cindy made a good point. When I think of horror, I think of intense feelings of dread and people's heads possibly rolling off. When I think thriller, I think crime and like true story espionage. That's a good point. You got a lot more potential for violence. It's like it. It seems to be in like a lower band of the emotional range. You've got like horror tends to deal with things like hatred and desire to kill and like you know that kind of thing. Whereas oh, like no, oh, not always. What do you mean? They well, could be monsters. They don't have a hatred or desire to kill. It's just what they do. Yeah, no, that's true. That's a but desire to the kill them. Here and fear thing. I don't yeah. know if there's a desire there. I mean, do there's we not, desire it's to not kill evil. cows? Yeah. I, I, I understand what you mean. It's <laughs> not do. like it's not evil. <laughs> um, right. But uh, and Eric made an excellent point, which is that Shaun of the Dead, Zombie Land, non-zombie, etc., <laughs> are not uh, shameless book plug. Are not horror. They're comedy that uses horror tropes. That's a very good point. They're not really horror, but they do have horror elements. So it's like most people would refer to that as a comedy horror. And like Dave said, it's like it's not really horror. You can't say oh, I like some horror and say that. You know, they understand what makes horror work, though, and that's what makes them effective movies. And they also understand they understand horror so well that they can make horror jokes, like something that's yeah. like such a horror thing where it's like, oh, okay, I, I get it. You could tell they're fans. Exactly. Exactly. Um, Dave, what um, what has been your favorite um, scene of horror, I guess, to write for yourself? Oh, to write? Oh. Yeah. He's going down the list of all the times children have been in danger. <laughs> Um, or or animals. <laughs> uh, Cindy S. Jameson, while you're thinking of an answer for that, made an excellent question, which is, do you think horror requires blood and gore, whereas thrillers don't? I would have said yes, and then I read White Space. White Space is a horror book that is relatively little violence, mm -hmm. and... I mean, the violence that's there is is psychologically scarring, but it's not like it doesn't describe in detail. And then he no, it's not lips gory off. at all. Yeah. Um. Anyway. My, uh, my, but it's it's my favorite horror book. Period. End of line. I think my f I think the f my favorite scary scene might be from season two of Yesterday's Gone when uh, Charlie and Adam are in a truck. And they're they're being carried, and they don't know who's in the truck with them. And all of a sudden, um, they hear like the sounds of these people becoming the infected aliens. Oh right! Oh, and, that was so good. And 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 Adam finds a lighter, and he's like lighting it to see. And then they see what they're fucking just monstrosity in the truck. And then he drops the lighter. And you hear the things coming. That was probably my favorite scariest thing to write. I won't okay, know what happens. That's, fucking that's freak scary me out. right now. Yeah. <laughs> but there is a scene where where Charlie, uh, there's almost everybody in the truck is dead, and this monster's like looking for for anything to attack and keep attacking. And 
Charlie is next to this little kid that's like crying and screaming. He's like covering the kid's mouth and holding the kid so he won't scream and the thing won't hear them. So I won't say how that ends, but that was like one of my favorite scenes to write. Read that's it on that. the toilet because you will shit yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Eric Winden said, most HP Lovecraft is horror and does not always have much blood or gore, or, or, uh, which is another uh, answer to Cindy's thing. Um, and then Remarkable Reads called me out. Today I learned that Slipknot are just your average surfer stoners. <laughs> yeah, man, Slipknot. All right, yeah, it's good stuff. Like going on tour. <laughs> and then Richard Brown Book said a very mean thing. A comedy horror is anything with Julia Roberts. So, <laughs> what is it? It, it so so Dave, what attracts you to it is the cathartic feeling and whatever. Zach, how about you? Where do you know that I'm not attracted to it? To horror? Yeah. Uh, that's the thing. I'm not attracted to it unless it has a great storyline to it. Like like The Walking so Dead create... or Yesterday is Gone. So you want to create horror with, with really good stories? Yeah, yeah, basically. Unless um unless I yeah. Unless I'm doing like Lexi Maxwell style and putting out whatever every week for Oh uh, dude, Dave people like Dave Sean... to get off to. Dave, you and Sean should collaborate with Lexi and do Erotic horror, or some, or horror erotica, or something like that. Horotica, horotica, <laughs> dude, it's the best thing ever. That's it. That's it. I just won. I just won. The, I just won life. I just we, beat we, life. We we sort of helped her with the XXX files. I'll say that much. Okay. All right. <laughs> Isn't that an old the title? XXX. Oh, I read that one. Yeah. No, that was good. That was good. You helped her on that. Yeah. Oh, huh, interesting. The Cell, would we consider The Cell horror thriller or both? Uh, the c I'm going to tell you oh, about I the, like cell. the Cell. I'm going to tell you about The Cell right now. Totally the right. Cell, is that with Jennifer Lopez? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, the Cell is a horror movie. Uh, it's got some thriller stuff too, but it's more horror. And that scene with the horse being dissected by glass was messed up. Now, here's the thing about The Cell. I went to see it in a theater... And there was, uh, I saw it with uh, a female friend of mine, and we were sitting there watching Tonight it. on and a special episode of What's Up, Dave's Butt. <laughs> we, we hear this girl crying, and I'm like, why is she? Because a horse had just been cut up. And I look over, and I see it's not just a girl. It's a girl of about six or seven years old. <gasps> this irresponsible cunt of a mother brought her child to see that horrible movie. I wanted to get up and murder that bitch. <laughs> Wow. I wish I had Dave in every radar movie that I went to. <laughs> the cell Especially is just so. The cell is so. Be I was in South Florida when this happened. Yeah. I think people in South Florida are just another All thing that's stupid. All the fucking time. <laughs> wow. But the, the, the cell is so disturbing, though. It should be like rated X. I mean, it's seriously that disturbing. And to I didn't bring find it that disturbing. Uh, for, it was it was very disturbing. But I was. Uh, don't bring I, a I, child I, into it, though. No, 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 clearly not. But I would I would I like I am I was less disturbed by that film because of the interesting concepts it presented than mm -hmm. many other horror films that I've seen that are so much more terrifying to me. I don't know. I, I think I think it was the animals though that really pushed it over the edge. And they and they had girls in tanks. I mean it, it was really disturbing it movie. And that's coming from me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Eric Eric said, I love horror for the visceral feelings of dread it can create. It's exciting. Yes. So is erotica. Visceral feelings of something else that are also very exciting. I'm telling See, I you don't, guys, it's, I, a I'm it's a match made in heaven. That's what I don't like about it. Is for me, and you know, power to you if you fucking like it, but for me, when I'm reading it and all I'm getting out of it is feeling like I'm about to die or I need to be looking around, that's when I'm like, why the fuck am I reading this and spending my time on it? Well, I could yeah. be watching Bubble Guppies or whatever the fuck that <laughs> Garrett talked about earlier. Bubble, 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 guppy, guppy, guppies. Bubble, 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 guppy, guppy, guppies. Bubble. Guppies, what? Bubble. <laughs> <laughs> I love that show. <laughs> yeah, it was a good show. Is a good uh, uh, oh, I, I, I think I think the cathartic thing is is something that I think on a human level we we crave it. I mean, why would we go on roller coasters? I think part of us wants to be scared. Uh, okay. And 
And, and not not terrified. You know, we we don't want someone running in our house with a shotgun. Go, ah, just kidding. We don't want to be that scared. We want to be scared in Boy, a controlled. We did. Andy could make a living at that. <laughs> we we want to be scared in a controlled environment where we know everything is going to be okay. Right. I understand yeah. that. Yeah. It's, it's thrilling. Funny. It makes you feel like your life actually has some purpose and thrill to it. But 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 not yeah. everybody's wired the same. I don't my need my that. 6-year-old, you know my 6-year-old is easily scared and I can tell that he's probably not going to be somebody that likes horror unless he changes a lot. <laughs> I think I think um I may have just had a thought here. I think okay, that um, oh, sh- I, think, I think that people have like I I, I most people most people want lives of, of uh, 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 like co- sort of secretly. They don't actively go seek them out. But most people would, most people would would be very happy with a life of adventure, of of Hell thrilling yeah. danger, and like being you know, like. Would you honestly like? Would you? I mean, well, Dave, I'm not going to ask you this. I might, <laughs> I might not ask Zach this either. I, You're the wrong I'm people not for this question. My basement. <laughs> but if it was, if it was an option between writing Realm Keepers or living Realm Keepers. I would want to live Realm Keepers. I would want to go to another place where, yeah, my life, you know, maybe would be in danger, but I'm a wizard and I would, you know, fight and everything like that. It's dangerous, but it's so much more fun. There's so much more stuff going on. And Dave, I don't know if you feel that same way about, like, fantastical no. adventures or something like that. No, no I want a very normal life. My imagination right. is more than enough. And, that, and that's I, fine. I, but I've had, like, horrible things happen, so I don't want that. You're a broken person. I am. But I'm not saying <laughs> I had enough of that. Want, <laughs> I'm not saying that you want that that you. Uh, I, I, it's a longer. I'm running a longer point. So like, so when I see a, a movie or something like that, that gives me that feeling of thrill. That gives me that feeling of like you know, oh, like I know that I'm not really gonna be hurt, but it gives me that feeling. Like I imagine what living that life would feel like. It approximates that feeling closely enough to make people like it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I In other I just, words, I, I, paraphrasing. I just can't what I understand just that for Saw. For Saw, it's uh, like, and then oh, I think I that wanna, people just get wanna... that, like on that I really think people get desensitized. And then I do think that there are people who want to do bad things to other people and they watch oh, yeah. things like that because they can't. I don't think that's a majority of people. I like uh, That's a good point. I think that yeah, I think that there's a lot of I think that there are just people out there who Desensitized to, really bad to everything. I love seeing people die. Yeah, exactly. It's there like, are whole websites devoted to that. <laughs> um, Dare but, last, but it's true. <laughs> <laughs> it is kind of true. No, I, I, no, I've only been to your website once. Actually, I've only been to visit one page, and there were very. It was very sweet. You had a story about Baricio and a puppy. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, it was Baricio and his puppy, and he was damaged in the past, but the puppy helped him. I'm I don't not remember talking what about it was. my website. <laughs> you talking about Collective said, Inkwell? You yeah, know, he I said st- there are websites. There are websites devoted to like showing dead oh. shit. Oh, yeah. And then I you, you started you, laughing. <laughs> They, 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 there's websites where people post murder photos of children bashing the head with hammers. Oh wow! And okay. and, and laugh and laugh about it. Wow. There are fucked up people out there. <laughs> there are, are some pretty dark. Anything we can write. <laughs> there are some pretty dark corners of the internet. I ended up in one once, and I was like, you know what? I'm never gonna go very far from Facebook. That's just not White, gonna happen. Whitehouse.com. Remarkable Reads just said, when you've worked overnight at a gas station, you've seen way too much. They're talking about me? <laughs> I think Remarkable Reads is stalking me. Maybe. <laughs> or maybe they're talking it about was, them. Maybe this is maybe a... They this also, is a yeah. yeah, I used to work overnight at a gas station, and I did see quite a lot of stupid, scary shit. Eric Gwyndon really? said, what would you classify Pan's Labyrinth as, horror or fantasy? Okay, hold on. Before you answer that, is that the one All with right. the guy with the eye in his hand? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I haven't seen it. I just saw that part in the trailer, and I was like, fuck that shit, I'm not seeing that. That is a whimsical <laughs> horror movie. It is, uh, I, I like Guillermo. Horror. Guillermo del Toro uh, writes some very beautiful horror movies. Uh, he has, like, there's an innocence of childhood and fear. Uh, he, he, he writes that, uh, he does those movies a lot, and, and he does them so prettily. They're, they're, they're beautiful movies and dark. They're kind of like Tim Burton, in a way. 
Hmm. Oh, wow. Remarkable Reads came up with the best idea ever. I wish Dave would do Mystery Science Theater. Okay, you know what? I want to do that, but I don't want to do it for movies. I want to do it for televangelists. Just televangelists. Yes. I, I want to, I, like 700 Club, I want I want to be on the bottom, like just making fun of it the whole time. I'd probably watch that. I'd probably watch Dave. <laughs> just, you know. Your yeah. God is false! <laughs> <laughs> Dave, what um, what do you find the hardest part uh, when you're writing horror? Is there is there something that just doesn't come naturally or just takes longer time for you? Anybody surviving. <laughs> <laughs> having to having to find new people to stab so I get the writing down well that I can describe it perfectly. No, um, actually, I I have a good good point to that. Uh, I'll, You're gonna uh, answer the question line. what I find hard about yeah. writing for? No, no, no. I've I no. I have a good I have a good um like follow up question to that. How do you let's let's start actually trying to help our audience, most of whom are writers. How do you um write? Uh, characters die in your stories. Characters die, yes. old, mm -hmm. new ones show up, and then the older ones die, and new ones show up. How do you? The it, it, of life. <laughs> yeah, it seems like that would be rather difficult to maintain. Like, I mean, I guess you just got to stop the series at some point, but it's like you spend all this time building up these characters, and then they die, and new ones show up, and you have to make them compelling. Otherwise, people aren't going to want to keep watching or reading. In your case, how do you? Go about that. Make people compelling. You, I mean, you make them you real. Have to, like it, it's the recycling characters thing. They it's don't like, recycle characters. They're not. They're not archetypes. Where no, no, no. But I mean, like, like with having new characters all the time. Yeah. How do well, you? I don't know that we have like a constantly rotating cast. <laughs> not like Game of Thrones. No. But yeah. you, you. Well, okay. If you're if you're asking, how do you bring in new people? And you, you you bring them in, you know, while the old people are still around. You kind of like, you know, kind of mix them in, and then you kill off the other people. So so they interact with the people that you like, and then you know they're around for a little bit. Then you kill off the old people. It's like T Dog. Wasn't the other guy <laughs> first introduced before T Dog, and then T Dog was out, and the next guy was introduced, and you, you, you make people you make people care about the characters, and then you kill them. <laughs> Did I get an answer to my question? Uh, what do I, I find know. hardest to write in horror? I was trying to I was trying to follow up that question. <laughs> I didn't get an answer though. Uh, Can't follow it up. Screw you. I didn't get an answer. <laughs> I I don't know. It's I don't know. That there's anything specifically hard about horror. I mean, writing something that's disturbing, like uh, when the father brought, put the gun to his baby's head, that was a little difficult to write. Spoiler because, alert! Christ, Dave, come on! Well, I didn't say what happened, but but I I um, I, I am sort of yeah, I I'm not a method actor, but I do try to get in the heads of the various characters in the books and how they would react to things. So I try to imagine them out as best as I can. So that scene, just imagining that somebody could do that, was difficult to to write. But it, it's not you know, it's not like I'm laying bricks or something. That's real hard work. Right. <laughs> Land um, pipe. Okay, what not you, hard to imagine. What um, I, we've talked, like I said, we've talked about other genres before. We have talked about young adult. We've talked about uh, sci-fi, and we talked about fantasy. And I always like to talk about the rules of the genre. Um, obviously, all rules are meant to be bent and or broken. But like for fantasy, um, you know, having having uh, well, you know, for sci-fi, it's like it's got to be actually somewhat based in science, like at least theoretical. For young adult, it's like we had a series of rules that were like generally in young adult you want to do this. What would be your rules for aspiring horror writers? What are things that you're like that you're like, you know, good horror does blah, bad horror does blah. Uh, make people care about the characters. Don't write stereotypes and archetypes. Make them real characters. Is uh, that so why do they care when you kill them? Yes. Well, if 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 so, no, not even if you just kill them, but if they're if somebody's life is in danger in a movie or a book and you don't give a shit about them, it's what's the point? 
It, it, there's no yeah. stakes. There, there has to, you have to have your reader invested in the character and invested in what that character hopes and what that character fears. If you right. haven't done that, they won't care what you do with that character. It's like when we killed Greystone. I mean... <laughs> Oh, I just have to—I I just have to toss this out. Out this one quick little thing. Oh my God, I've been dropping so many fucking Easter eggs in my social media, and like nobody's finding them. Chrissy found one, one Easter egg in my social media, and nobody else, nobody else has found any. And I've been dropping them all over the place. I'm, I'm disappointed and ashamed, people. Disappointed. <laughs> Garrett had to point them out to me. <laughs> I was like, well, I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, but. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm just trying to encourage people to go look and find them. Anyway, so um, so like, uh, but don't you think that like establishing characters is like you know, and like making people care about the characters something a you universal kind of thing? Like, exactly. Well, it was gonna yes, be like, yes, but but in horror you have to do it. I think you have to even pay more attention because so many, so many. I don't know if this is a case now. I know it was a case when I was growing up, though. Um, uh, so many people are doing bad horror movies and books. Uh, I think people have gotten a little more sophisticated, though. So I, I don't think that my bias against it is still true. But I know back in the day when you used to pick up a horror book, a lot of times it was just a piece of shit. Right. And, and it is because they did no groundwork. I care. They just thought, scary concept. Boom, let's go. It's kind of like the worst of popcorn movies. Okay, let's make this movie where Tom Cruise is racing on a nuclear warhead. And it's like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, Tom Cruise is a bad example because usually he's in good movies. But um, but you you get the idea. Uh, yeah. it's not the concept; it's the characters and how they deal with the concept. You could take a very very bit. You could take Frankenstein, the oldest concept out there, and make it good if you make a compelling character. Doctor Jekyll and uh, Mister Hyde. It was a great BBC series uh, called. It was either Jekyll or Hyde. I don't remember, but it was a very old concept. But the fucking show was awesome because they made you care about the character. Right. Okay. So th that, that's my number one thing. Uh, other than that, I don't, I don't know that there are any hard and fast rules. I, what, a, what about? And this is a rule that I sort of know of, despite not really being involved with the genre. Is that is the whole thing of like after the reveal, the monster is less scary. Uh, what are you talking about. It, it, it's less scary uh, used the same way. Yes. But you can introduce other elements. You can introduce mm. new levels of threat. Okay, interesting. Makes sense. But if you're doing just like a monster horror book where it's like it's the shark, and after you see the shark, like the tension dropping away. I've found that to be true in in like thrill. Like okay, one one film that I guess is horror is Cloverfield. Cloverfield, you don't see the fucking monster like the whole movie until the last few seconds, a few minutes of the film. And it's terrifying for that reason. Because you don't mm -hmm. even know what the fuck this thing is. You know it's a right. gigantic thing that destroys buildings. And like after that, then the tension sort of starts to bleed away. Yeah, I, I think that's true for a lot of a fantasy, horror, and sci-fi. When the mystery is gone, it's time for the book to end. Uh, yeah. Or the movie to end. Uh, and unless... And the romance, it's after they fuck. After they fuck, just like <laughs> let it fade away. <laughs> just the end. What right is after it for erotica. Roll over in the end. <laughs> after they after they've all fucked. Everybody in the <laughs> book has fucked. <laughs> uh, every but, possible combination. It, a, after the mystery is and, and that's one of the things I found um in in a lot of horror books in the past, uh like Dean Koontz and sometimes Stephen King, though not as much uh once the general mystery was over, I wasn't as interested. Uh, and I think that that is one area where you, you do have to be careful. Or you have to introduce new layers to the mystery. Uh, or something else that the audience Layer. doesn't... Layer? I hardly know her. Sorry. <laughs> something that the audience doesn't expect to see coming. Uh, some other thing. Don't be like a one-trick pony. Have something else in store that you know yesterday's gone we faced that challenge uh, after yeah. the third season we you know we that could have been complete but we had to you know find a, a way to a make people care again and b do something a little bit different so yeah after they found out that the island was purgatory wait 
<laughs> yeah. All right. Well, unfortunately, we've run a little bit long, and Zach and I both have to skedaddle and get on out of here. Um, anybody have any tremendously salient points before we end off for the night? Uh, no. Do we oh. ever have any salient points? <laughs> Do we know what our topic is next week? Next week? Uh, okay, I guess we can announce this now. Next week, uh, we are going to uh, not do a show on Tuesday. We're going to do a show on Thursday instead, and we are going to have on a couple of guests you may know. Mar. What, time on, what, right so, what time on Thursday? <laughs> Don't know exactly. Early afternoon. Oh, okay, I was going to say, because, you know, we do our self-publishing roundtable at 10 p.m. on Thursday. So don't oh, try no, to compete with us. <laughs> <laughs> I think We'll that, have a battle. <laughs> I think that um, for this show, nobody would show up for the self-publishing roundtable because they'd all be too busy watching this show. <laughs> Agreed. Oh, you're thinking Dave would you be there by himself. <laughs> you th wait, 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 wait. You think you would take our audience away? You think no, no, we think we're going to take us? your hosts away. I think I'm going to take your hosts away. Like, your hosts would come watch this show. Carl and Chris. Yeah, exactly. And... Exactly. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> you best. Oh, we'll <laughs> anyway, um, anybody have any shameless self-plugging to do before they... <laughs> I, I, have to, I have to end the show so I can go self shamelessly self-plug -plug in another way. <laughs> <laughs> now, anybody have anything new or exciting this week? Realm Keepers, episode 6. Yeah, well, that's us. Dave, I, ha I have Dave. Plug I have yourself, a Dave. I have a Kickstarter. <laughs> no, no. Uh, Z2135, and we're working on some new books that you'll really, really love, and they'll scare the shit out of you. And Z2135 is, Z2135 is fucking awesome. I'm reading it, and it's part of the Kindle Serials program, which means that you can buy it for $2 until the whole series comes out when it's 4 So you should just go buy it right now, because fucking A. And yeah, we do man. have Realm Keepers. Again, if you haven't already pre-ordered Realm Keepers, you have exactly th two hours and 57 minutes left to do it. Otherwise, you're not going to get any. So with that said, uh, this has been the uh, Storytelling Podcast, as always, brought to you by AuthorMarketingClub.com. Thank you, everybody, for watching. We appreciate you showing up. Join us next week on Thursday afternoon when we have two very, very special guests who I know you'll be happy to see. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Author Marketing Club does not endorse the views of David Wright. <laughs> no, they do not. No, no. Good night, everybody. Good night. Yeah. Longest outro ever, my god. <laughs>